Hi everyone and welcome along. We are well into the month of February so that means we're starting to see shoots of snowdrops, crocuses and narcissus popping up all around us so I thought it's the perfect time for some seasonal word art. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay so I have um, already written out some lettering uh, in pencil and now I'm just going to rub it out. So today what I did is I, I found a font that I really liked um, this font is called Golden Book, if anyone's interested. I printed it out and then I just sort of copied. Some of you may have light boxes, you could always trace. But essentially you don't always have to start completely from scratch when you are doing word art. But I have um, so many word art tutorials in the word art playlist that you can go back and have a look at those and see how we do lettering from scratch just using a pencil and a ruler. Now um, this month uh, February feels like the sky is just that little bit bluer uh, and the sun is out a little bit more so I am going to decide this time that I'm going to paint in my letters first and we're going to paint them a lovely sky blue colour and because I'm painting them a nice light uh, translucent blue it means that layering up flowers over over and under and round and about is not going to be a problem um, the January word art that I created we had black lettering which looked very chic um, but of course that would be very difficult to layer over with anything really in watercolour um, and so we painted that lettering in last after we had drawn all the flowers in so my aim with these word art tutorials is to give you a little uh, something a little different each time in terms of learning something new so I'm just going to fill up this lettering with a mixture I've created of a very translucent cobalt blue deep and a little bit of Windsor blue which is a nice slightly turquoisey blue and in using quite a lot of water and my size zero brush um, I'm getting a, a sort of slight sense of ombre every now and then just with certain areas of the, the lettering being a bit stronger blue and others being a bit paler as you can see here I've just extended the color by using a wet brush um, the size zero brush seems like a really good option because this lettering is quite fine um, so I need to have good control but also I don't want to have a brush so tiny that it takes me a hundred years to paint in the color so I'm just going to fill in the lettering and then we can start looking at what flowers we're going to put in. So I think what you have here is um, with that sort of ombre blue it almost looks like you're, you're looking through the lettering to see a, a lovely sort of spring cloudy sky behind but that's that's just me. Anyway, so we're going to now draw in some lovely flowers. So um, I'm going to begin with some, some narcissi, narcissus, which are daffodils, uh, uh, the daffodil family, they're sort of miniature ones. I'm just sort of hovering and hesitating with my pencil because sometimes I feel that we don't actually need to draw in anything and actually we could just go for it with a brush so I've got my size 4 tenths which is my my smallest brush it is the smallest brush in the set of pro art master stroke brushes that I sell in my Etsy store so you can get your hands on the exact brushes I'm using um, and yeah I'm just gonna go for it so I'm gonna have some that are going to overlap over the top so this is a little leaf that I'm painting in I've just got a mixture of um, sap green and cadmium yellow in there and then I can just draw in a few stems. I'm sort of having the, the growth line to be roughly the same as the uh, 
the midline of the, the lettering. And so I'm just I'm just playing around really with these stems. Um, so like a like a daffodil, we've got long, fairly slender stems which just sort of angle at the top, little angle poise. Now I'm just being clever having a little leaf poking out over the front. It's a nice thing with, with Narcissi or Narcissus. Someone tell me whether I'm saying that right or not. Um, is because the flowers are actually quite small on the top of the daffodil. I'm not worrying too much about having stems that are sort of not giving me enough room for my flowers. Okay, I think I've got enough now. But you can see how I'm just using the the leaves and stems to sort of go in front and behind the various lettering I've got. Now I'm going to use cadmium yellow and this is quite quite dinky so I'm still using my four tenths brush. But I'm painting in about five petals here. Little star shaped petals. Ooh, you might hear crumble barking in the background. We um we do our filming um, all on one day and uh, we can't always guarantee that Crumble is going to uh, respect the filming schedule. Uh, right, and I'll pop one in underneath. But you can see I'm just leaving a little bit of empty unpainted space in there which we're going to fill in with a lovely orange centre. But that's all we need for our Narcissus, so I'm just going to go along and fill in a few clusters along the way. Next, we're going to put in some crocuses, another lovely flower that very much symbolises the start of spring because it's one of those bulbs that, that shoots up. So to do a little crocus, I do have a, a tutorial for a, for a full-sized crocus painting but essentially we want to be creating a lovely sort of teardrop shape flower so let me show you one not behind a letter so brush stroke size zero brush starting sort of with the rounded top and then just gradually releasing pressure lifting up your brush to get to the fine point I'm using cobalt violet here and um, I think actually it's it's sometimes easier to paint in the flower first with a crocus. Oh this is making me feel really optimistic and, and spring-like. You could do three petals if you wanted, slightly more open. And crocuses also come in a lovely sort of orangey yellow, a sort of egg yolk colour, which is just delightful. And they may be just a little bit more open. So just allowing that little bit of unpainted space. And also the cadmium orange and yellow are just nice and opaque so even when painted quite delicately they will overlap really nicely uh, layered up on on the lettering here but it's important when you are doing word art like this and you're layering over lettering you don't want to layer over the top of it so much that you can't really tell what the word is anymore. So do keep that in mind.
the size zero brushes is great for this kind of thing again. Okay. Let's have some little, little ones that aren't quite fully grown. And then some sap green will do us very nicely. We don't really need any lemony yellow or other colours in the green for this one. And it's nice also to keep your greens changeable when you're doing something with a lot of uh, flowers and foliage in it because if you've got all the same green it suddenly looks very sort of un unrealistic, unbelievable, a bit flat and uninteresting. So really have a look at all the different greens there are in nature. So I just want to make sure these are all dry before I paint in the stems because we don't want too much of a bleed. So I will just tentatively have a go at these ones here, the first ones I painted in. Yep, that's okay. So I'll have a few leaves come out the front. But essentially the stem is a sort of fairly um, continuous line curving out as well just like the crocus. So these lighter greens are just, they were just using whatever paint I had left on the brush. Just goes to show you if you're ever wondering how do I create a lighter colour? It's just all about adding water really or, or removing the amount of paint you've got but those really sort of light colours will struggle to, to layer over the top of anything. now using my four tenths brush which is just perfect for getting right up close to the lettering but not quite overlapping where we don't want it to anyway. And finally, we're going to add some snowdrops. Um, again, I have a snowdrop tutorial on my uh, flowers and foliage playlist uh, for a full size snowdrop. Um, but what I'm just mixing up here is a very, very dilute kind of greeny, gray, shadowy color that is going to create the white snowdrop petals because I like to paint everything in translucent watercolour not to add like solid white paint to anything um, because I think that's so what I'm here to help teach is, is what watercolour can do. So this is going to seem extremely tiny weeny and um, impossible to see so Ant I hope you're zooming in right now. <laughs> I'll get in trouble for that. Of course he's zooming in he knows he knows me better than I know myself when it comes to uh, editing the videos but what I'm doing is just creating a cluster of little teardrops. In this, what seems like a sort of strange minty green color, but I promise you, as soon as we start adding the stems, it's going to suddenly look very much like a white snowdrop. So when you are faced with the challenge, of creating white flowers on white paper, what you want to look for is where is that tiny, tiny drop of colour lurking in that white flower? Is it a, a slightly greeny tone like with the snowdrops? Or is it maybe a, a peachy gold kind of colour in a, in a white rose that's actually just a little bit warm in tone? Um, and from that, you can just drop that tiny bit into, oh, I'm going to put one down here, you can drop that tiny bit of colour in there 
And then what happens if you're painting nice and translucently, just like these almost invisible white flowers are, um, as the water dries, the colour, the very tiny amount of colour that is lurking in that little bit of painting will sort of flood to the sides and make a really nice crisp edge. And suddenly you'll have very defined little petals. But it's also going to be helped along by the stems and the leaves and the details of that. Okay, so this needs to dry, I and mean, it really does need to properly dry before we add that on. And so then we can add the green, and then we can pop in our bits of detail on the other flowers. Um, my, my Narcissus have definitely dried, so I can just put in a little cadmium orange circle in the middle. I mean, Narcissus come in a number of different sort of colour formations but I'm doing this quite classic one. And ones that are sort of slightly on an angle I'm just going to fill in that circle because it looks like the the flower is sort of angled away a little bit and that's more like a trumpet rather than seeing right down the middle of it. Okay so I'm going to use a combination of my sap green and the cadmium yellow for my snowdrop stems and I'm going to begin here so we have a little sort of cap on the top of our three flowers, our three petals and then we're going to loop down this one's going to come over the top, so I'm going to add a bit more sap green to my mix to make sure it stands out. Oh, I'll have that one coming over the top as well. A nice sort of um, slightly rounded point leaf. The other thing is snowdrops have these funny little longer stem bits that look like that. Okay, so we'll do that again. A little cap on top, a little blob, looping down. So you can see it is getting a bit more crowded now, so we've just got to be careful not firstly to not overload the lettering, but also not to get too bulked out. Ah, there you go. So that flower hadn't quite dried and you can just see the colour just flooding into it. It's not the end of the world at all. It's just watercolour, isn't it? Okay, so we'll just get all the snowdrops filled in and then we can do last bits of detail. Okay, last little bit. So I'm going to do cadmium orange and just give these crocuses just a little bit of um, detail, a few lines, just with my very small brush. Um, if you find some colours work really well just in more concentrated form, others feel like they need just a little bit extra oomph. So I'm going to give my cobalt violet just a bit more oomph by adding a bit of French ultramarine blue. And so you can see I'm just adding just a few little brush strokes to, to the crocuses.
we could do a, a little bit to the narcissus, but I don't think a huge amount is going to be achieved. It's kind of fun. If you want, there we go. And then of course you could add a little bit of a darker colour to the leaves and stems just to get a bit of a bit more interest, a bit more depth there. So I'm just adding French ultramarine blue to my sap green, which is creating a lovely deeper green colour. Um, so you can see we can just sort of underline or accent a few things. Even when it's teeny tiny, it still pays to just focus in on details. And there we have a lovely springtime bit of word art to celebrate the shoots and bulbs that are uh, coming up out of the earth in February. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. And don't forget to tag me in your artwork if you're sharing it on social media. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and you'll never miss us. Okay, until next time, bye.